I'm making a series of short videos that will demonstrate that the theory of evolution can easily be disproven on multiple levels and makes no sense. So why is there such a large consensus that evolution is true, especially among those that are highly educated? I think there's two fundamental reasons for this. First, evolution forms the foundation of a worldview. And second, the theory of evolution carries with it no scientific accountability. And there are three fundamental reasons for this, which I'll explain in this video. The most important reason why evolution is so widely accepted is because over the past 200 years, there's been an increasing effort to exclude God from Western thought. When Darwin proposed evolutionary theory in 1859, it was a perfect fit with the growing belief in atheism. After Darwin published his book, evolution was quickly adopted, and this is not because of any serious scrutiny of its precepts. It was because it fit with an ideology. And since Darwin, evolution has become the foundation of every perverse worldview that springs from atheism, including things like secular humanism, eugenics, abortion, racism, biologic determinism, Marxism, gender fluidity, and others. These ideas are founded on a rejection of deity, and these precepts are all ultimately defended by references to organic evolution. So when you feel resistance in trying to refute evolution, it's not necessarily because your logic isn't sound. Remember that you're not just refuting a biologic theory. You're challenging a worldview that's been encroaching on civilized thought for nearly 200 years. Now, I can't overstate the effect that this pre-existing worldview has had on the study of evolution. If any objective scientist looks at evolution for what it is, he'll quickly realize that it's impossible. However, because of a commitment to atheism, interpretation of data is manipulated to conform to evolution. Now, because evolution is the foundation of atheism, its acceptance is strongly associated with a pre-existing worldview, that is, a worldview that is consistent with evolution. And to anyone who is seriously engaged in debates over evolution, it's obvious that most evolutionists are of a strongly left-wing political persuasion. And this tendency has been documented by studies. This explains why evolution is zealously defended in centers of academia, often with religious fervor. I don't know of any other field in science that creates this kind of philosophical divide. And this is one of the evidences that evolution is not science, but is strongly influenced by philosophy. So when deciding whether or not to give credence to a theory, understand that evolution is studied not to explain biology, but ultimately to support a worldview of secular humanism. Now the second point. Today I'm going to call out evolutionary biologists on a flaw that no one ever addresses, their absence of accountability. What I'm saying here is twofold. First, evolution is unprovable, hence no scientific accountability. And second, there are no consequences for incorrect conjectures. Now you're likely to hear that evolutionary theory is relevant, and biologists may point out things like antibiotic resistance in bacteria, or the development of flu vaccines, or pesticide resistance in insects or the creation of new strains of wheat through the introduction of mutations. I hope that you won't buy into any of this. These examples do not constitute evolution, and there is no dispute over the selective breeding of species. A theory that is claimed to be scientific cannot be trusted unless it has accountability. Now let me give you an example of a scientific theory that has accountability. Modern medicine. For example, as a practicing pathologist for nearly 40 years, I evaluated thousands of pap smears, and every report I signed carried with it a risk on my part. If I missed a malignancy, a patient could suffer from delayed treatment. If I call a pap smear positive that's really within normal limits, a patient could face unnecessary surgery. If I frequently made erroneous calls, my peers would lose confidence in my expertise and I could lose income. Additionally, I constantly faced the threat of being sued. In addition, I had to take a proficiency exam every year in order to be able to continue practicing. This is true with every medical specialty. There is no tenure because decisions made have a bearing on patients' lives. 
This is one of the reasons that modern medicine has earned respect as a science. Objective measures are in place to assure accuracy. The validity of a diagnosis or treatment is borne out by the natural history of disease. And all true sciences have this type of accountability. The validity of a conclusion is measured by objective results. Now let's contrast real science to evolution. If a paleontologist is funded to look for pre-human fossils, he has no incentive to search for unbiased truth because his findings have no direct relevance to daily life and are very hard to disprove. His primary incentive is to find something that will add luster to the theory of human evolution and help continue funding. Remember, research follows the funding. If someone is given $1 million to find pre-human ancestors, he's going to make sure he finds them. If his research doesn't find any evidence for human ancestry, his efforts will be deemed a failure and he could be out of a job. I'm saying that evolution is not just irrelevant and unaccountable. Research is skewed to accept data that supports evolution and reject data that contradicts it. In other words, evolution has the opposite of accountability. There is an incentive to fudge data. It's commonly stated that evolution does have accountability and that articles published on evolution are subjected to peer review. In the circles of evolutionary biology, peer review is an echo chamber. It's conducted entirely by those pre-committed to evolution, and there's a rejection of research that contradicts evolutionary dogma. None of the mainstream biology journals are peer-reviewed by individuals who are not pre-committed to evolution. For this reason, evolution has not independently earned any respect as a science. Evolution is branded as science and effectively piggybacks on legitimate sciences. In arguments presented to defend evolution, evolution is often portrayed to be a cornerstone of modern biology. Whenever you hear this, know that you're listening to propaganda. This is a talking point in the attempt to attach relevancy to evolution. No scientist in any field of biology relies on evolution unless he's speculating something about evolution itself. Evolution is a paradigm through which biology is interpreted. It's claimed that based on that paradigm, you can make predictions that will conform to that paradigm. The ability to cite observations that are consistent with evolution doesn't make it true. In the 16th century, most astronomers believed that the Earth was the center of the solar system. And at that time, that was the overwhelming scientific consensus and it formed the foundational principle of astronomy. For centuries, mariners successfully navigated across oceans based on that paradigm. Nevertheless, it was just as false then as it is today. Now, a final reason that evolution has no accountability is because it's irrelevant to experimental biology. In fact, it's been a detriment in terms of its philosophical implications. For example, the paradigm of biologic determinism has been bleeding into behavioral sciences for years. This has resulted in ideas such as humans being genetically predisposed to rape and infidelity, homosexuality, and even pedophilia. These ideas are founded on naturalistic evolution and are being discredited now. The assumptions of evolutionary mechanisms have, in these cases, been harmful. First, they're false. And second, they carry enormous negative impact to society. Evolutionary theory has also been a detriment to molecular biology. For many years, it was taught that 98% of human DNA is useless and that this was a consequence of millions of years of trial and error through evolution. Now this junk DNA paradigm was presented as a poster child of evolution, and leading proponents of evolution stated that this was fundamental evidence for evolution. This idea is now known to be false, and this has been recognized as a big mistake in the history of molecular biology. How can a false theory be beneficial? Evolutionary theory teaches children to believe in science fiction, that mutations will eventually result in complexity, but more importantly, the teaching of evolution has persuaded many to doubt the existence of God and to lose hope and a purpose for living. Thank you for tuning in. I have a lot more to say, so I hope you'll subscribe to my channel.